Yudhishthira ruled in a just manner, but as time lapsed, they forgot many things that they themselves went through and they forgot many things about what other people went through. And above all, they forgot many things that Krishna told them on the way. A million deaths on their hands, enormous strife that they themselves went through, and above all, the presence of an avatar with them. Everything slowly faded into memory. The day-to-day -day affairs of the kingdom became more important. Largely, Yudhishthira was the only one who remembered every word of Krishna and tried to live it to whatever extent he could with the responsibilities that he carried upon his head. All others slowly became kings, enjoyed being, re uh, being around the king, being the king's brothers, they married multiple times and they lived. They reached towards their old age. So Yudhishthira said, it's time we coronate Parikshit and we try to sort out our own lives. Mind you, they lived with Krishna, but they still need to sort it out. That's the whole problem with humanity. They lived with the presence of the divine, but they still have to sort it out themselves. Yudhishthira said, let's climb the Mount Mandhara in the Himalayas. So they started climbing. Steep mountains, they climbed up steadily for weeks on end. And as they were getting into steeper climbs, one day as they were walking, Draupadi slipped and fell. The four brothers were distraught, they screamed, Draupadi fell. They just, she just went down the mountain. No, 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 don't get ideas. Don't think it's like a Hindi cinema, the last scene, when somebody falls off a cliff, ah! No, don't think of that. She's too proud even now to say, ah, she'll go silently down and thut. She's that kind. You need to understand her. She will not go, ah, and all this. All the four were distraught. Yudhishthira did not even turn back, he kept going. Then they caught up with him and Bhima asked, why? Why Draupadi has to fall? She has suffered so much in her life. She stood by us right through. Why should she fall? What has she done? What wrong has she done? So Yudhishthira said, there are many things, but let me say one thing. One thing is she committed herself that she will love all the five husbands equally, but she could never manage that. She always loved Arjuna and longed to be with him as a wife. She only fulfilled her duty with us. With her, her love was only for Arjuna. And when she came to know Karna is also Kunti's son, she wondered why can't he ha why can't she have him? But these two things she has fallen and they continued. Then Nakula fell. When Nakula fell, they asked, why did Nakula fall? Nakula was too proud, he was supposed to be the most handsome man. He was too proud of his appearance. His vanity made him fall, Yudhishthira said. They continued further. Then Sahadeva fell. Then they asked, why? This man barely uttered a word. Then Yudhishthira said, he barely uttered a word, not out of his humility, because he was smug. All the time, whatever is happening around him, he knows because 
of the wisdom that he imbibed. But he cannot speak, but he… that did not bring humility to him. He was always smug. Then Bhima fell. Then Arjuna asked, why Bhima? He's such a lovable, pure human being. So Yudhishthira said, what did Bhima in is his gluttony. He ate not like a man, he ate like a pig. And he enjoyed other people's suffering, whoever they may be. If you begin to enjoy other people's suffering, you are hammering nails on your own coffin. You don't do that. You can cause suffering sometimes. Sometimes it may be necessary to cause suffering to somebody. It may so happen that the actions that you take will cause suffering to somebody, but you never ever enjoy it. You do not enjoy somebody else's suffering. If you think you can enjoy somebody's suffering and bring well-being to yourself, you are in a fool's paradise. And that was Bhima's state. He believed he has to enjoy other people's suffering. Otherwise, his own success is not fulfilled. For that he fell. Arjuna fell. Nobody to ask a question. In Yudhishthira just mumbled that his vanity of being the best archer in the world, though he was not, he was a great archer, but not the best. To be the best, he would cut somebody's thumb, he would do something else, whatever needed. And still all his life he lived with the insecurity. Just suppose tomorrow morning a strapling youth of sixteen comes and shoots better than me, what do I do? He constantly lived with this insecurity, for that he fell. Yudhishthira alone walked on. Then, Indira sent his vehicle to pick up in Yudhishthira. The… the process of what's happening here is, there is a context to this. That is, if you arrive absolutely virtuous, you can go to Devaloka with your physical body. That means you can enjoy the Devaloka. If you go to Devaloka without your physical body and they are all eating well, what do you do? All apsaras floating around, what do you do? If you put food, it will fall down. <laughs> no body, you know. So Yudhishthira alone is going to be picked up with his physical body. So the vehicle came and uh, escorts, the hospitality escorts from Devaloka said, uh, you come in, we have come to pick you up. But what is this dog, they said. Yudhishthira turned back and saw, there was a dog behind him. And he recognized this dog. This was the same dog which was running around them when they were walking the streets of Hastinapur. He couldn't believe it. He did not even notice. In his focus to just keep going, he did not even turn back and look at his brothers at Draupadi. Where would he have noticed the dog? This poor dog, all the way from Hastinapur, it has come with me. Then he said, I don't know what this dog is, but it's come with me, all the way. Everybody else fell. So if he has made it this far, probably he deserves it. So let him go with me. They said, no, dog's not allowed in Devlok. Yudhishthira looked at the dog. The dog looked at him hopefully, then he said, no, I cannot leave this dog. I did not call him, but he's traveled all the way. When my wife and my four brothers, who I believe are virtuous men, fell off because they were unfit to come this far, and if this dog made it, it must have some karma within himself that he's come this far. So if fate and destiny did not take him down, it is not for me to reject him, we will take the dog. They said, no dogs on our craft, we don't have that kind of seatbelts. 
He said, no dog means then even I am not going. I will sit on this mountain and leave my body, but I will not go. They were very amused. What? If you can't bring your dog, you will not come to heaven? He said, it's not my dog. I don't know whose dog, what dog this is. But all I know is, he's made the journey, so maybe he's fit. It is not for you to judge. If he was not fit, he should have fallen along with my brothers and my wife. He did not fall. How can we deny him? Now all the dog lovers, cat lovers, don't make it up in your mind, oh, I was right seeking blessing for my cat or dog from Sadhguru. He is not seeking blessing for his dog. He feels the dog has made the journey, it is unjust to deny him the prize of the journey. It is his sense of dharma, it is not his attachment to the dog which is making him do this. Then they landed in heaven or in Devaloka along with the dog. Then the first thing he asked is, where are my brothers? Where is Panchali? He said, we'll go, first let's go into Indra's assembly. He walked into Indra's assembly, there Kaurava was sitting, Duryodhana was sitting like this, as usual, in full arrogance and glory. Seeing Duryodhana first sitting in the assembly of gods, Yudhishthira was taken aback. He has made it here. Then he looked this way, Dushyasana was sitting even more arrogantly. Shakuni too. But there were no sign of his brothers, no sign of Karna, no sign of Panchali. He said, this is not fair. How could Duryodhana come here? He is the cause of all the murder we had to commit. He is the cause of so much pain and suffering in our life and in so many other people's lives. How come he is sitting there? How did he find entry? And where are my brothers? Where is my wife? They said, your brothers and your wife are in another place. He said, then I am not interested in this assembly. First I want to go there and see how they are doing. They said, don't you want to sit with Indira? He said, no, it doesn't mean anything. First I want to know where my brothers are. I don't like Duryodhana, Dushyasana, Shakuni sitting in such prominent places in this Devaloka. I want to see my brothers. They said, okay. And they took them down a winding path. This was a beautiful, fabulous place. As they went down, it started getting darker, potholes and not ba badly lit and went down, 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 down really into the pit of darkness and then he started smelling all kinds of evil smells and he started hearing mounds of suffering and people screaming in pain, all kinds of things worse than Kurukshetra battle. He asked, what is this place? Why are you taking me here? You mean to say my brothers are in this place? Then he heard screams and shouts. A female voice, is that Panchali? Why is she screaming? Are you torturing her? Then he heard one by one the voices of all his brothers. He said, why is my wife and my brothers in hell? When Duryodhana and his clan are sitting in heaven, this is not fair. The gods who took him down, they said, it's not for us to decide. The dharma and karma is decided by Chitragupta who keeps accounts. We just taking you down, if you… if you don't like the place, let's go back. We just brought you here, we're just guides, that's all. Let's go, you, do, you don't seem to like the place. For sure I don't like the place, but how can I leave my brothers, my wife here and go? I have to take them and go. The guard said, that's not our business, we can't do that. Then Yudhishthira thought for one long moment, then he said, I will stay here. 
I will stay here with my wife and my brothers. I don't want to go to the Devaloka, I will stay in hell. They asked, are you sure? He said, yes, this is where I will stay. Then Indira appeared himself and he said, your sense of justice is something that we really appreciate. There is no other man like you in the world. But after all these things, you have still not given up your hatred for Duryodhana and his brothers. The moment you saw them in heaven, you were taken aback. And all this reaction is coming from that. Even when your wife fell down, fell down the mountain and your brothers fell, you didn't look back, you had that much dispassion. But the moment you saw Duryodhana, Dushyasana and Shakuni sitting in Devaloka, everything came back to you. You have not given up hatred. Unless you give that up, you will not make it back there and your brothers will not make it back there. Yudhishthira sat down, cross-legged and he looked into himself and he saw the seeds of hatred have been suppressed but not burnt out. And any time they can sprout and become a forest, one seed can populate the whole creation. So this one seed of hatred still within him and he knows if the situations nourish it, once again it'll flare up. Once again there will be a Kurukshetra in some other form. So he sat down to destroy that seed of hatred within himself. And when he managed to do that, then all the gods came down to that place and they said, Jaya.